U.S. oil addicts are in denial and the urgent need to change U.S. energy policy. The addicts have now spoken. Not only do they want more oil and gas drilling anywhere and all the time, they also want to continue giant tax breaks for oil companies that are rolling in dough or money. And for decades and decades, they have supported giant oil industry tax breaks like the oil depletion allowance. And now, they oppose even short-term tax credits for renewable energy and energy efficiency. Unless the kids or the future generations pay for them by adding them to the national debt. It's a dodge, for instance, when senators and industry representatives use the excuse of today's oil prices to call for drilling on the continental shelf everywhere in the Rockies and in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. And if they don't know any better, well, they should. The United States holds less than 3% of the world's oil and gas, yet uses approximately 25% of its annual production. The oil addicts claim we need to drill ourselves dry as fast as we can. No, we don't, get, we don't need to get any more addicted to an increasingly marginal, expensive resource. We need to break this oil addiction. The oil companies who are blanketing the media with advertisements are just doing their job to earn a profit and maintain market share and satisfy the stockholders. But the politicians and elected officials who back them up, what are they doing? They haven't just lost their logic, they have lost their chance. They have lost their sense of shame. They can't even blush. High energy prices are badly hurting everyday Americans, millions and millions of middle income households and lower income households and small businesses are falling behind on the utility bills, partly because they can't afford to fuel their vehicles. The house of cards effect is that the money they spend for energy isn't available to pay the mortgage. Among one of the most amazing cop-outs in the history of the whole world, today's absence of dynamic, persistent, positive energy, leadership in the White House, Congress, is bad. How do we ever adequately fund education, health care, transportation, and social security if we can't, or won't, or don't solve the energy problem? Would we, could we, should we? We can't. At the White House, and on the right wing in Congress, where they defend oil companies as though they were poor, poor orphans, they say shifting our economy to lower cost, sustainable alternatives will be very expensive. Well, yes, it's going to cost something. So they say, let the market make the shift. Pitting tiny renewable energy outfits and consumers against international behemoths with record-setting profits. So meanwhile, they watch as U.S. as American consumers fork over at least $400 billion a year on foreign oil. And since oil is a world commodity, our demand helps fill the coffers in the Middle East and what the McKinsey Global Institute has called the oil windfall in the Gulf. Oil dollars feed more terrorism, dictatorship, and jihadism all over the world, from, pa from Venezuela to Pakistan to Moscow to Iran to Iraq. Just one year's expenditure on foreign oil spread out over a decade or something like that 
would quickly change this nation's energy economy so that it was electrified and efficient. The nation could easily run on the renewable energy like wind power, geothermal, and solar. The true cost to American consumers? Nothing really. We'd make a huge profit while strengthening the economy and the treasury for the future generations, for the kids to come. At a time of an immense economic peril, we'd convert disappearing petrodollars to long-term domestic jobs and energy security. When this nation moves to electric cars and electrified rail for freight and passengers, it's possible, quite possible, you know. Americans will save money and time. Fueling a rechargeable car today costs about one-fifth what it costs to fuel gasoline or diesel. And it saves a lot of time, too. But for now, we are waiting for the White House, which is not going to happen. Not with this present administration, because it's bad. While we are waiting for the oil industry and Congress to realize that the world is changing around them, that they have priced our economy into perhaps oblivion, or into recession, and then perhaps depression. Yes, these are more signs and end times, last days, whatever have you call them. But anyway, there is a new world coming. And a lot of things are going to have to change. It's called peak oil in the last days. And these are the beginning of sorrows. These are more signs.